Okay, let's start with a quick example here. Uh, we have a, a, an asset, a very simple asset in a very simple world, right? So in the world, there are just two states of the future. The first state is the bust state. That means things are gonna go badly. The second state is the boom state, and that means things are gonna go well, right? So we got our two states of the future. The boom and the bust. And the probability that the bust occurs is 60%. The probability that the boom occurs is 40%. Right? Now we have one asset in this future world and that's stock A. And the outcome for stock A in the bust right, is to have a 5% return. So when things go badly with a 60% chance, stock A has a 5% return. When things go well with a 40% chance, stock A has a 40% return. We want to know what the expected return, the variance, and the standard deviation for stock A are. We start with the expected return. And I'm going to write out this formula in longhand so that we can see exactly what's going on. So we have the expected return on stock A has to be equal to the sum Right? Remember that this is the sum term of the probability of each state occurring times the return in each state. So the return of A in each state I. Okay where I is the boom or the bust. Okay. So now we can condense that down into our math formula, right? What we have on the slides, which says the expected return on stock A is equal to the sum of the probability of each state I times the return of each state I. Okay. Now let me expand this sum term out here for you. Right. Expected return of each state is equal to the probability of the bust state or the probability of one state times the return of one state. So we'll start with the bust. Let's say the probability of the bust times the return in the bust plus the probability of the boom times the return in the boom. Right. And for our problem with just two states and one asset, this is how we calculate expected return. We multiply the probability of each state times the return of each state, and then we add those together because the expected return is the average, the probability weighted average of these potential outcomes. Right. So now we can just plug it in. The probability of the bust is 60% and the return in the bust state is 5%, plus the probability of a boom, which is 40%, times the return in the boom, which is 40%. And uh, we do our algebra correctly, and we get that the expected return for this stock is 19%. Okay. Now, it's important to note here that the expected return is neither of the actual returns, right? In other words, what we expect to happen doesn't have any bearing on what actually is gonna happen, especially in a very uh, simple world like this where there's only two potential outcomes, right? We know exactly what those outcomes are gonna be. If there's a boom, the stock will earn 5%. If there's a, a, a sorry, boom, it'll be 40%. If there's a bust, it'll be 5%. Our expected return is right in the middle because it's the average. And this is the, the other way to imagine what this outcome actually says or what it's actually telling us is imagine the case where we have 100 years of the future. And in every year of the future, we either have a bust or we have a boom. Well, after 100 total years of having booms and busts with 60% probability and 40% probability, our average annual return will be 19 because in one year we'll get five and the next year we'll get 14. And on average, over the 100 years, we'll have 60 years of 5% and 40 years of 
And in total, we'll have made 19% on our money. Okay. So that's our expected return. Next, we want the variance because without expected return, uh, I mean, without risk, we can't correctly interpret what the expected return is. So we've got the variance and here's our formula for variance. The variance of the return on stock A is equal to the probability of each state times the return in each state, the actual return, minus the expected return for A, which we just calculated, and each of those, uh, the, each of those terms squared. So we can expand this, the sum term, we can expand it and rewrite it so that we have the probability of the bust times the difference between the actual return in the bust and the expected return, that term squared, plus the probability of the boom times the actual return in the boom minus the expected return for A squared. Okay, so a little more complex, uh, but, but nothing significantly different than what we have here. We're just looking at the difference between what actually happens and what the average outcome is. And then we're probability weighting that difference uh, to look at the, to get an idea of the potential spread in outcomes and thus the, tell us something about the risk in outcomes. Okay. So now we can just plug it in. The probability of the bust is 60%. The return in the bust is 5% minus the actual return for A, which is 19% squared, plus a 40% chance that the boom happens times the actual return when the boom does happen, that's 40%, minus the expected return, 19% squared. Okay. Now it's important here to make sure that you're watching your order of operations, especially if you're using the financial calculator. Okay, I recommend that you do this in a series of steps so that you keep your order of operations <coughs> together. If you're using a graphing calculator, you can go ahead and type in the whole thing all at once. Uh, that's the nice part about the, those graphing calculators. But if you're using the financial calculator, go ahead and do the steps individually so that you don't make any mistakes. So first do our parentheses, right? 0 0.05 minus 0.19 is negative 0.14 squared plus 0.40 minus 0.19 is 0.21 squared. Then do our exponents, 0.6, times the square of negative 0.14 is 0 0.0196. 0 0.4 times the square of 0.21 is 0 0.0441. Then do our multiplication, then do our addition, 0 0.01764 plus 0 0.1176. And we get the variance of the return on A, which we denote using the term sigma squared is equal to 0 So our variance is point zero two nine four. But remember that the variance is not in a term that we can actually use. Uh, so what we actually want to talk about when we use, or what we use when we talk about risk, is the standard deviation of the return on A. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And we denote that just as sigma, because the square root of sigma squared is sigma. So we take the square root of 0 0.0294, and we get a standard deviation of 0.1715, or 17.15%. And the nice part about the standard deviation is that it is in fact in percentage terms where the variance is not in percentage terms. And that means that we can talk about these two things in conjunction. We can say, okay, the return 
of stock A is our expected return, 19%. And the risk of stock A is our standard deviation of returns, which is 17.15%. Okay. And these two things together characterize entirely this asset. In other words, without knowing both risk and return, we can't say anything practical about the asset. Okay. Now, I just want to show you one last thing, which is that how this plays into the standard deviation, I mean, into the distribution of possible outcomes. Right. So I showed you the bell curve in the lectures, and the bell curve is centered over the expected return. Which is 19%. And then all the possible outcomes for our stock fall into a range surrounding 19%. Right? And in fact, that range is precisely defined by the standard deviation. So I can add right, a standard deviation. So that's 19 plus 17.15 and get. 36.15. So that would be a return of 36.15. There's one standard deviation. I can subtract one standard deviation. 19 minus 17.15 and get 1.85. And that's a return of 1.85. So that's plus a standard deviation, that's minus a standard deviation, right? and this is two standard deviations. And then we could have another term where I actually added 19 plus one standard deviation plus two standard deviations. And then a final term where I add 19 plus three standard deviations. So that's plus two standard deviations, that's plus three standard deviations minus two standard deviations, minus three standard deviations. Okay. And what this tells us is that our actual return, remember this is just based on the mathematics, this isn't something that you guys will have to know or figure out, but just based on the math of what's involved here, we know that the actual return has a 68% probability of falling between plus one and minus one standard deviation of the expected return. So our actual return has a really high chance of being between 1.85% and 36.15%. It has a slightly less smaller chance. There's a 27% chance that it falls in these realms, plus two standard deviations for a total of a Right. This entire section, there's a 95% chance that the expect that the actual return falls within two standard deviations of the expected return. And then there's a 99% chance that it falls within three. This is how we use the idea of risk and return to think about the future. We use risk as a way to quantify how far away from what we think is going to happen, how far away what actually happens is from what we think is going to happen.